Hello and welcome to ILTV's Elections Arena. I'm Aaron Porras and today in the ring, Israeli unity coalition talks hit a roadblock just hours away from a full nationwide lockdown. Joining us to discuss is founder of the Front for the Protection of Democracy, Uri Zaki, and Aviv Bushinsky, journalist and former spokesperson for the Prime Minister's office under Prime Minister Netanyahu. Thank you both so much for joining us today. Uh, I know there's a lot going on right now with the lockdown pending, um, but thank you again for taking some time out to join us. Now, a total lockdown for the Passover holiday is soon scheduled to set in, but desperately needed coalition negotiations are now stalled along with the rest of the country. And sources within the Likud and the blue and white parties each blame the other side for the stalemate. While among the issues still being debated is the policy of annexations in the West Bank and the Jordan Valley under the auspices of the United States' Middle East peace plan. And Blue and White has reportedly recently compromised on the timeline for those annexations. But the Likud is also apparently asking for veto power over judges' appointments. And Blue and White is not willing to give in to these demands, adding that the ball is now in Likud's court. So, uh, Aviv, I actually want to start with you. You know, what, what is the deal with the judges? What, what is uh, Likud maybe afraid of in losing uh, the, this veto power? First of all, I think that the issue with annexation uh, though it's a uh, far more uh, uh, fundamental issue than anything else uh, and uh, will have a lot of implication uh, about Israel's future, the uh, judges uh, appointing a committee is something that for most Israelis is, is insignificant. And I think that uh, it might be kind of an excuse uh, for Netanyahu either not to go ahead with the uh, deal uh, for a unity government or and uh, he is looking for a way to back off from this uh, entire uh, deal. Uh, unfortunately for Netanyahu, uh, killing this uh, issue or hampering the uh, negotiation on, uh, on something uh, that, as I said, insignificant to the Israelis is uh, a very bad excuse. So therefore, the question is whether he'll uh, bend down and uh, let this thing go or uh, he'll find a different excuse uh, to blow up the negotiations and uh, back to uh, plan A, which is to still be in power uh, for a total well, of, uh, of uh, 16, 17, 1800 years from now. Well, so, so the question can actually be reversed in, in such a way, because if, if this is so not important, then, you know, Uri, why, why is the Likud pushing for this? Why do they need it so bad? And if it's so not important, why is Blue and White not willing to give it to them? Again, first of all, it's not the Likud as, as for Netanyahu. Netanyahu has, I think, you know, according to my judgment, has a, a vendetta towards a, one single individual, with this, which is Shai Nitzan. For him to uh, future nominate him or appoint him to uh, the Supreme Court is something that he will not forgive and will not allow. And uh, that's what drives him to uh, try and uh, amend uh, this committee, uh, though it's impossible because you'll need to pass a new legislation. And I don't see the blue and white uh, doing it. I think for the blue and white, after the, uh, their excuse for joining the coalition was uh, the uh, COVID-19. And then they said their excuse is to protect the democracy and the, the, the judicial uh, uh, institution to, 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 uh, to uh, bend down and let Netanyahu fool around with this thing. I think it's uh, way too much. And uh, for them, this will be the, the red line. All right. So, Uri, we haven't heard from you. I'd like to, I'd like to get your take on this. Sure. First of all, I, I agree almost completely with uh, Aviv. Um, I think that Netanyahu, his um, trophy would have been a 61 majority. Now, we did not get that in the last uh, three rounds in the past uh, uh, year. Uh, but now, once he dismantled uh, blue and white, and mind you, when we talk about blue and white, it's no longer the blue and white of a 32 seats. It's a, a, a shrinked uh, faction of uh, 15 um, MKs led by... Uh, by a very weakened um, uh, Gantz. So we're not talking about a unity government, we're talking about an enlarged uh, Netanyahu coalition. Now Netanyahu has another option. Uh, once uh, Blue and White was dissolved into different segments, one of those segments is the hauser Handel segment. These are two uh, right-wing uh, members of, uh, formerly members of uh, Blue and White, who 
were the biggest obstacle for Benny Gantz to form a coalition because they say they said they would not rely on the support from the outside of the Arab uh, joint list and ended up preventing Gantz from uh, uh, forming his own coalition and uh, basically being the trigger for the dissolvement of, of Blue and White. Now, they have their own faction. They're no longer are uh, tied to uh, the uh, Blue and White uh, party or uh, faction. That means that with their two hands, and also Orly Levy, who was part of the Labour Gesher Merit, and now she's her own faction. Again, she's not tied to anyone else. Together with them, uh, the right-wing bloc, Netanyahu's immunity bloc of 58, together with Hauser and Handel, and Oli Levy, he already has 61. Therefore, Gantz doesn't have any leverage over Netanyahu anymore. His only leverage, which is about to end in the next uh, couple of days, is the mandate. The the officially still holds the mandate from uh, the president. Again, this is part of the... Well, he, he's system. requested an extension. Do you think he, he's not going to get it? Look, he, he, he does he doesn't supposed to get it because he doesn't have a majority anymore. I mean, we know for a fact that half of his own faction, his original blue and white, led by Yair Lapid and uh, Bogi Alon, would not support his uh, uh, mandate anymore. Of course, the right-wing bloc would not support it. Uh, Merits uh, would not support it. And uh, the uh, joint uh, list would not support it. So he doesn't have a majority in the Knesset anymore. Therefore, if I were the president, I would not grant him uh, this extension. Uh, but I don't know what the, the, the president has a lot of uh, leeway. Uh, he's very independent uh, on his decisions. But if you ask me whether Benny Gantz still holds a majority, definitely not. He doesn't. He lost his majority the day uh, he uh, split uh, blue and white and became the uh, interim uh, speaker of the Knesset. I no, yeah. Uh, I, I, if I may say, I tend to, to uh, disagree, but it's only my assumption, of course, uh, not based on any knowledge. Uh, that in case Benny Gantz will ask for an extension, he'll receive it, mainly because uh, the president and the majority of the Israelis do want a unity government. So as long as he, he the president, can give it a chance, he will. Uh, uh, the question is, I think that uh, this, uh, so to speak, minor issue with the judges uh, is a test case for Netanyahu, how Netanyahu is sincere to uh, respect the uh, real deal, the real uh, chip in the deal, which is the uh, rotation in uh, 18 months from now. And if they'll see that uh, in this such case, Netanyahu is not willing to give. And after the, as I mentioned, the fact that uh, uh, they, Blue and White, already uh, gave up almost about everything, for them it will be one step too much. And I think that uh, they'll understand that uh, uh, Netanyahu perhaps is not the right guy to make, to, uh, make deals with. All right, now recently... You know, well, but, yeah, but I just want to mention that, uh, Aviv, I, I, the thing is that he's no longer dependent on them. I mean, he might have a majority without them. That's great. Which means that that might be the uh, the end uh, the scenario. I mean, that would... Uh, That's good, but if there's... Corona. It's correct, but if the, there is dignity in politics, which is a big question, but if there is dignity in politics, I think that they will not allow themselves to... Uh, to give up on this thing. All right, well, so, something, Uli, that you actually mentioned just a moment ago, you, were, you started talking about the divisions within the Blue and White and with the, with the Labour Party as well, uh, uh, from, from Gesher and Meretz, uh, and now those divided factions have now actually reunited into a larger Blue and White Party. What, what benefit uh, is there to Labour and Blue and White, or what's left of them, to, uh, uh, of combining their efforts when both of them really are looking to get into the, co into the coalition either way? I'll, I'll speak. I'll, I'll have to uh, to say the, uh, for um, for the record that I'm I was elected as the chair of the executive uh, committee of the Merits Party uh, last uh, Thursday. So I, when I speak about our former uh, partners in the last elections, I speak from a position of someone who uh, who is an official in the Merits Party. I have to put it uh, on the table. Mm -hmm. uh, having said that. Uh, look, um, it's not a united blue and white party. Again, blue and white was dismantled. Right, We're it's it's, about kinda, it's a new, new, new blue it's and white shrinked, version. It's a shrinked, uh, yeah. the, the Benny Gantz faction of 15 seats. And I, and I remind you, the voters gave blue and white 32 seats. Uh, Benny Gantz now leads only a group of 15. And now Amir Peretz and Itzik Shmuli, the two members of Knesset from the Labour Party out of their three, 
said they're going to join uh, both the Netanyahu government together with Gantz and perhaps also uh, start a, uh, a process of becoming part of the blue and white uh, faction in the Knesset and of the party. Um, look, to me, as someone who was once part of the Labour Party, who was very uh, much uh, in belief that uh, this union between uh, merits and labor uh, is the, the right thing to do in order to strengthen uh, the left, strengthen uh, you know some ideology and values in politics, which Aviv uh, mentioned before, the, the, there's a question whether there's, there's dignity in uh, politics. Uh, I hope that uh, the place for dignity and values in uh, politics will be uh, higher. Unfortunately, uh, Mr. Peretz um, proved that wrong. And, you know, last time around, he shaved his famous uh, mustache to prove that yeah. he would not sit with Netanyahu so, uh, less than a month after the, uh, the the March elections. He's now sitting with Netanyahu, abandoned all his principles and values. Uh, well, Again, that's not well, the dignity of, of politics. And I think at the end of the day, this is the funeral of the historic Labour Party, so, the yeah, party that yeah, Aviv, uh, I mean, I mean, the how, state of Israel, Ben Gurion's party. Yeah, Aviv, how, how do you feel about you know the the end of the Labour Party, as as Uli just put it, and this new conglomerate faction? Uh, what was there? Was it necessary for Labour and, and Blue and White to really join forces in this way? Uh, how, how does that increase their negotiating power going forward? Uh, from uh, personal experience, I can tell you that once you shave your mustache, you can always uh, grow it up, grow it again. And I think that's how uh, Peretz uh, sees these things. I am uh, can say, you know, I'm even though I'm ambivalent, but in this case, I'm quite uh, upset and surprised because knowing uh, Amir Peretz in the period that I was working for Netanyahu in the finance ministry, his views on economy, on uh, uh, ideology, uh, political issues, uh, domestic issues, is completely, but completely 180 degrees from Netanyahu. Uh, therefore, I'm totally surprised. And I think that the uh, fundamental mistake that the Labour Party did was that they abandoned their principle. And uh, if you uh, uh, were following the three uh, different uh, campaigns in the, year, in the past uh, year and a half, uh, they hardly talked about the uh, two-state solution, about uh, other things that are still on the table. And once uh, their leader abandoned those uh, fundamental principles, and which are important, I think that he became an insignificant politician and he showed it. Uh, 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 and, the, and the best example is that the fact that he joined Netanyahu not to be the one who forms the coalition and then he can say, okay, I'm the one who saved the country. It was, as far as I see it, only uh, uh, for the benefit of his uh, personal uh, 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 seat uh, as, a ministerial, uh, as, as a minister uh, in the government and not more than that. And it's a pity for the Labour Party that uh, uh, most likely they uh, are... Um, Disappearing or dissolving or dying. So, I don't know how. So to, what? What, to say what about the right wing parties? Well, you know, it was a strange, a really strange uh, uh, step that he did. But uh, you know, uh, that's politics, and so, he showed the, the the dirty side of politics. So again, Aviv, you know, what about? Because we're talking a lot about these negotiations. What about the right wing parties? We have Yamina. Uh, and we have Israel Beitenu, which isn't necessarily right wing under Avigdor Lieberman, but both of them are feeling kind of left out right now. L Lieberman obviously is not joining in the coalition discussions, and then Yamina, uh, under Defense Minister Bennett, is, is arguably about to split off. Is that a, is that a risk? Uh, first of all, for for Lieberman, uh, the anti Netanyahu campaign was uh, exceeded uh, his ideology, and actually his ideology uh, was. Uh, uh, rather not Netanyahu and not the uh, right wing and other issues, and of course the anti-religious. So uh, I think that uh, Lieberman made a tremendous mistake, uh, especially from the right wing point of view, and he uh, missed his uh, golden opportunity to, uh, to be a, a, a key factor in a coalition. Uh, but this is something uh, like the Labour Party, uh, what, rather but about, uh, irrelevant. But what about what moment. about Yamina? What about Defense Yamina. Minister Bennett, who has you know has been working very hard in this coronavirus crisis, and yet uh, looking at the negotiations, it doesn't look like Yamina is going to get very many ministerships or, or ministry portfolios, not even remotely as many as they're as they're going to 
uh, want. First, so yeah. So first, so first of all, don't be so naive. Uh, it's not if you're working hard and you're a good minister, it doesn't mean that you'll uh, still uh, uh, in the future be a minister. You can see it in other ministerial portfolios, and now people say course, about but, the health minister. But Yamina that is also you lack know, of, a lack loyalist of faction to the right wing there. block. Yeah, but I think that Netanyahu cornered uh, Yamina. Uh, and uh, his offer will be very uh, limited uh, regarding the portfolio. It won't be a defense minister. It uh, barely will be a, a minister of education. Uh, the Yamina is uh, expecting uh, to receive uh, four ministerial seats. I think that Netanyahu will offer them uh, two mediocre seats, and they'll have to decide whether to accept it or not. Um, I think that due to the fact that the Yamina is not a crystal strong one united uh, uh, party due to the fact that uh, uh, Peretz is, uh, is, 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 is there and Smudrich, I think that they'll have to uh, take the, the leftovers. Uh, but for Netanyahu, it's not a big deal because uh, Netanyahu can always uh, dismantle his coalition saying that his partners are not right-wingers enough, and then he'll call Yamina again, and Uri, they'll be glad to join. Uri, what, what's your take on this? You know, especially, especially, as you said, as a representative of Meretz in this conversation, you know, how would you react if you were in Bennett's shoes right now? What do you think the Yamina party is going to do, and uh, would, you, would you welcome Yamina into, into the opposition? You know, I'm not sure what I would have done, but I know, uh, you know, Netanyahu's uh, key persons in this uh, negotiation uh, is uh, Yariv Levin, who's unfortunately going to be the Speaker of the Knesset, and we can talk about that uh, later, and uh, Zev Elkin, both very shrewd politicians, very right-wingers. And, uh, you know, I want to take us back to, um, to 2015, to, uh, or actually to 2018, when there was a uh, possibility of a coalition with Herzog, and it was very advanced. The talks were, were very advanced. The negotiators from Netanyahu's side were Levine and, and Elkin, and they prevented this coalition and had, um, and had uh, uh, Lieberman come in uh, in order to prevent a uh, balanced uh, or, or, or a left-wing element in Netanyahu's coalition and to have it as a solid right-wing coalition. I'm not sure, as I said, mentioned before, that we'll end up with a uh, government without blue and white and with Yamina in uh, as, 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 as long as, as Levine and, uh, and Elkin are uh, someone that, uh, people that, that Netanyahu ha has, uh, uh, his ears are, are uh, they have his ears. Um, another option is uh, that he's using uh, Yamina right now as an excuse, as a pretext to uh, lower the expectations of uh, Gantz. Again, Gantz doesn't have any, uh, uh, any leverage uh, or he has very little leverage vis-a-vis uh, -vis Netanyahu, especially if you compare it to a couple of weeks ago. I hear from the actual uh, supporters of the Amina party, the, the settler movement, uh, you know, I have many people I speak with there. Uh, many of them think that Yamina should be part of the opposition that they gave uh, Netanyahu too much of a, uh, of a rope, uh, sure. also including his own personal issues. They say that as long as uh, Naftali Bennett is under the shadow of Netanyahu, he will never be a uh, possible uh, candidate to replace him. Mm -hmm. They say that uh, the uh, ideas of annexation are written on snow, written on ice, I'm sorry, and, and, and are not, uh, are, will not uh, happen. And they advise their uh, party to stay on the uh, in the opposition. All right. Well, we honestly, as a political uh, advisor, I don't know what I would have uh, told Bennett. As an Israeli citizen, I would have hoped that the party that represents the Zionist religion move, religious movement uh, that are that are uh, uh, that is that has uh, uh, you know a moral principle, a historic moral principle, would say, I will not be part of a coalition that is based on, on someone who's uh, indicted. I think right. that's something that they right. yeah. well, Okay, okay, well, I, I think we have to move on to our next topic. We're running out of time, unfortunately. But so let's talk a little bit about the emergency aid package that was just passed, 90 billion shekels uh, to support uh, in, in stimulus for small business owners, uh, uh, the elderly, uh, children, et cetera. Is this gonna be enough though? Because the coronavirus 
uh, committee, which was just formed recently, is saying, you know, this we're, we're giving up too much for the sake of the health in terms of uh, uh, the economy. Uh, how do you feel about that, Aviv? Do you, do you think that we need to focus our quarantine? Are, are we doing enough to support people? What's happening? Uh, it's very hard for me to judge because I don't have the uh, full uh, picture. But uh, first of all, I'm, I'm looking at Netanyahu that has every second day he appears on TV and it became a one-man show that he uh, tells us about uh, the future actions before they were even approved by the government, by the way, or by the Knesset nowadays. Uh, and uh, he kind of fell in love with this uh, uh, phenomena. Uh, not only that he fell in love with the phenomena, but he also uh, takes a lot of credit, a personal credit for the, for the uh, different actions, even that uh, Putin said that he's doing the best things and the Chancellor of Austria uh, uh, praises him, etc., etc. But I think that most Israelis do think that Netanyahu uh, uh, runs this uh, crisis uh, quite well. Uh, going back to economy, uh, if you listen carefully to what Netanyahu said uh, just uh, the day before, uh, he started, started talking about the exit strategy, which uh, hints that it might be uh, uh, it might begin uh, um, uh, implementing it uh, right after Passover. Uh, so, I, if I combine the economy and politics. I think that uh, Netanyahu is really looking for this exit uh, strategy. Uh, strat uh, strategy. He thinks that uh, they might uh, be able to uh, overcome this uh, crisis, and by thinking that way, his appetite has grow uh, uh, so tremendously that he thinks that maybe he doesn't need a unity government, and right, he's well. uh, such a su su successful leader. Right, Perhaps well. it's better to. Uh, uh, create either a narrow government or go to a fourth election. All right, well, we're going to, unfortunately, uh, we have to end it here. We'll have to see how it all turns out. Uh, Passover is about to start, so I guess we'll come back uh, for negotiations, uh, assuming they're going to continue when Passover yeah. ends. But unfortunately, again, that is all the time that we have today in Elections Arena. I'd like to thank our guests, Aviv Bushinsky and Uri Zaki, for joining us. Uh, and thanks to all of you for tuning in. Also, remember, for more news from ILTV, please follow us on Facebook, like us on Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube and Roku TV pages. I'm Aaron Porras. See you next time. Happy holidays.